What is going on YouTube? I hope all well. I am back. I hope for good. I'm going to update you on where I've been for the past five, six months since my last previous video. Um, where I'm up to with training and where I'm up to diet. So last year I bulked like a mofo and put on about two and a half stone January through to December. I started the year on 14 stone, finished the year in 16 and a half stone. So I was a big, big guy. I was only got one and a half stone off when I was like a big, big, big lad. But obviously I got muscle now on the... Uh, anyway, so that worked. That was great. I put on size, obviously body fat, but also my strength went from here to... Um, which is the purpose of a bulk. So it worked effectively, I was made up, fantastic. Um, come January, I wanted to start clearing away from that. But however, November, December, I started getting a little bit of an inkling of sciatica. Anyone that's experienced sciatica before, it is vile. And I don't wish that on anyone because honestly, your sciatic nerve starts from the lower part of your back and it's your main nerve that goes into your legs. Now, there can be a number of things that is the issue with that, but most things is when it's something's putting pressure on the sciatic nerve, that gives you a disgusting shooting pain, which can be just on the front of your leg, the back of your leg, into your calf, and into your ankle, and into possibly into your toes. Mine was the full nine yards going from the, my upper back all the way down to my, my wiggly toes with a numbness and consistent pain when I'm on my feet. It'd go when I sit down, but it, it, it was there permanently when I've been on my feet for about an hour. Vial and I was smashing paracetamol and ibuprofen pretty much daily, which isn't good. Paracetamol isn't so bad, but ibuprofen you can get like stomach ulcers and stuff like that. It's, don't do what I did. Um, so after three months, it hadn't gone, and I was like, if it doesn't go within eight to twelve weeks, you should go see a doctor because end of the day, if it's not gone within that time, there's something seriously wrong. I might have hadn't. So obviously, I got myself off to my doctors, who then sent me to the hospital, and then the hospital have gone well you know, there's no muscular issues, all your nerves are working fine, they gave me an examination because what I did was I paid for my physio. Do not rely on the NHS for physiotherapy because chances are you'll be waiting for between 12 weeks to a year, seeing a regular physiotherapist, trying to get rid of the, the root of the problem and then get forward on for your scan. Don't waste that time. I know it's expensive, but throw the money at it, see a qualified physiotherapist. I saw a physio about seven or eight times and 30 quid ago, but it got rid of my muscular knots in my quads, in my calves, in my glutes, in my upper back, in my lower back, sorry. And, you know, she found out that when I walked, my foot was going like this. So, you know, it could be a squat or deadlift that's done this, or it could be the fact because my foot was always leaning in when I was walking, that that was put a chain reaction up to my hips, up to my lower back when I was squatting, deadlifting, and walking. So now I walk with insoles, and my, my physio found that out. So, my trainers now have uh, insoles in them and I'm walking a lot better. My foot doesn't cave anymore, so that could be the issue. Or it could be the fact that that one deadlift I did one time that I didn't do quite good form. But to my knowledge, every deadlift, because you guys have seen, I video fucking everything. Um, my form is pretty good on most of my videos. My back is always straight. I'm never like, I'm never like downward, not even downward dog, but I'm never like an angry cat, you know? Um, that's one thing that I care about, so that's why I'm shocked that this has happened. Anyway, we get we we are digressing. Um, so tomorrow I have an MRI scan to get a scan and find out what's going on my lower my lower back. I suspect it could be a herniated disc. If it was anything more serious, like a ruptured disc or a crushed disc, I would expect I'd be in bed in a lot more pain, not being able to move or do half the things that I'm doing. Have I stopped training? Have I? balls because nothing is going to stop me from training but I've just not been stupid you know when you get an injury it doesn't mean you have to, to give everything in stop doing the thing you love because the thing you love is what's going to keep you sane keep you happy and stop you from turning into a psycho which I am very aware I'm very close to however I have been only doing upper body days so my, my last split while I was booking was push pull legs push pull legs my new split has been push pull muscular endurance push pull muscular endurance so my leg days had gone, my deadlift days had gone for the past four months because I ain't stupid. I ain't going to try and make this any worse than what it already is because it's going to obstruct my life, my job, and possibly my health and well-being. So that just ain't worth it, is it? No. So on my muscular endurance days, is pretty much high reps, high volume, and then I've been doing three leg exercises, three machines, which is a leg extension machine, a hamstring curl machine, and a leg press machine, which I'm locked in, my back is straight, and I'm in control of that machine. I'm doing high reps. 
low weight because I ain't risking anything. I ain't making this low back problem any worse than what it could already be because it just simply ain't worth it. But however, I've still been able to do my chest days, my, my, my back days, my work on my shoulders, my biceps, my triceps. And you know, any guy, it's only any guy's dream. Not to have, obviously, a, a, the possibility of a herniated disc or a serious back problem, but to have a genuine excuse not to train legs and just do upper body every day. And now it is great, but I've, I've, I've genuinely had, like, every time I see someone deadlifting, I'm like, I, I, I want to be doing that. I don't miss squats because my whole life, squats have felt like an unnatural movement because my body is, like, literally 70% legs. 30% torso, my legs like dominate the entire part of my body. It's ridiculous, I hate it, it's annoying, so I've never felt comfortable squatting. That could be an issue why I've got the issue I've got, but God knows I'm, I'm, I'm veering off again, because I love talking. Shut up, Alan, get back to the subject. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've been doing muscular endurance with three leg exercises in there, um, because start of first January this year, I've been pulling back on my bulk, because I got, like I said, I got to 16 and a half, 16 and a half stone, very heavy, very overweight. My strength went up, fantastic, but now it's time to pull back on the bulk, see what lies beneath, maintaining my strength and a slow progression or um, calorie deficit, losing about a pound or two a week. I must be down to about 15 stone by now. And I'm fitting back in my clothes, I feel healthy again. And the muscle endurance sessions have helped because obviously it's full body workout, burning calories, similar thing to what a leg day would do. But it's, it's kept me training six days a week and that's good for here because my mentality is I need to be in the gym. It's what I love doing. You know, I'm a personal trainer. I change my life. I love fitness. I live it. I breathe it. I eat it. I sh Yeah, they were going too far there. Let's, let's take that back out. Um, so yeah, so the MRI scan tomorrow is to find out what's going on within my back. And then two weeks later, I will have a follow-up scan in Ormskirk. Not a follow-up scan, follow-up consultation in Ormsco Hospital to see the scan, see my beautiful x-ray of me, and then make a plan of attack going forwards. Now, even if, if it's just a herniation of a disc, I'm not going to go for surgery because 90% of the people I've talked to, surgery is the last option. They're attacking an area which is really quite um, important. There's a lot of nerves there. It, it supplies the nerve chain to the entire body and to your legs and everything, and if it goes wrong... You know, the, the success rate isn't that great. And even if it, if it is successful, there's no saying that you won't have pain afterwards. If they fix 100%, you could be worse off afterwards. Um, so unless it's like really serious and my disc is like crushed and it's getting worse and, you know, then I'll go for surgery. But if not, there's a few physios in America that have been watching some of their content on how to eliminate disc bulges and what you need to do going forwards. Now, naughtily, bad Alan, but I started doing them two weeks ago. I know I shouldn't have because I'm not got the results of a scan yet. But I just wanted to do something and they weren't that detrimental or, or crazy to do. It's not underweight, it's to do it cause the hyperextension of the back to put pressure on the lumbar spine, hopefully push that bulge in a tiny bit. And you know what? The past two weeks since I started doing them daily, my sciatica has died down, which is great. But my lower back pain is still there. It may have got a little bit worse, but the sciatica is gone, so that's not too much of a bad thing. I hope it's not made anything worse, but I won't find out until I get the results on my scan, which is tomorrow. So the next clip will hopefully be me in walking to the hospital if I decide to shoot some of it. Um, I will log that. I'm going to log this whole thing, this journey of um, getting better because I'm sure a lot of people have experienced sciatica and lower back problems and what I do on the road to recovery because I'm not letting it hit me down. Um, I'm only 31, th turning 32 soon. I want to be into fitness for about six or seven years. I'm not letting this stop my, you know, what I want to do for a career and for my life and everything is so important to me. So the next shot will be, like I said, me walking to hospital, possibly a picture of the scan room, maybe a bit of video footage. We'll see whatever I feel confident doing and I'll catch you guys on the next clip. See you in a bit. Here at the hospital. Place is empty. Extra and MRI scan, that's me. But the place is just waking up, to be honest. <sighs> a little bit nervous, but I've got no reason to be. It's only a scan. But the place is empty. Got my paperwork all filled out. So I've just left the hospital, I've just had my scan. That was an experience. I now know what it's like to be a pack of fruit pastels. Like, I thought you had a bit more space in there, but you don't, you re it's really, really confined. Um, you are like literally like that. Lay down, you've got something to press. If something goes wrong or you're uncomfortable, 
and have headphones on with the radio on, um, which doesn't really drown out any of the noises the machine makes. It's a bit loud, it's a bit unusual, but it's not really that bad to be honest. Felt a little bit of heat around the area where they were scanning, um, and I was on it for about 20 minutes, so it wasn't all that bad to be honest. And now I'm going to wait 14 days for the results. I'm going to check up in Omskirk. Now I'm going to grab a bit of food, then hit the gym. See you guys in a bit.